Well, good morning. Welcome to the new academic year. I hope you were able to spend some time out in Montana with your friends and family. For those of you who are new to the area, I offer a special welcome. You've landed in one of the most beautiful spots in America and one of the most special universities in our country. Thank you all for being here this morning. Now the excitement begins anew. Every day you look out on the Oval, more and more students are out there, uh, probably even today in the somewhat rainy weather. Fresh group of students who come to the University of Montana to fulfill their dreams. Those students have great expectations of us, as do their parents and the general public. And of course, we have great expectations of ourselves as we set the standard for higher education in Montana and the region. I want to thank some special guests that we have with us here today. As most of you know, we're governed constitutionally by the Montana Board of Regents. Regents are volunteers who are chosen by the governor because of their dedication to the ideals of education and because of their standing in our communities in Montana. In the audience today, we have our new student regent, Mariah Williams. Mariah is a UM student, and so we're very proud of her for being the next student regent. We have also Regent Fran Albrecht here, also from Missoula. So Fran, thank you for being here today. Let's uh, give a round for the volunteerism that those people have given. Also, also with us today is Clay Christian, the Commissioner of Higher Education for the state of Montana. Clay is a graduate of UM himself. Uh, his wife is a graduate of UM. His daughter is a graduate of UM. Uh, there's maybe a future son graduate uh, for UM. We'll see. Uh, Clay, uh, would you please stand and let us thank you for being here today. And of course, a very special guest, a very special person in my life, someone who helps me every single day uh, and is a very active participant in the leadership of this university, my wife, Mary. Mary, thank you for being here. So we're going to take a few minutes here at the beginning to celebrate some accomplishments of the people that make this university such a remarkable place. For those of you who are new to campus, we open our meetings with something called a UM Minute to remind ourselves of why we are here and to celebrate the accomplishments of our people. And let me begin by congratulating all of the faculty members that uh, Provost Brown just acknowledged, your promotion and tenure activities. Congratulations and thanks for the terrific work that you do in the classroom, in your laboratories, in your studios, on behalf of the students and the faculty of the University of Montana. So congratulations to all of you faculty members. I want to begin by recognizing a pioneering faculty member. Fred Allendorf is a Regents Professor Emeritus at the University of Montana. He's been a leader in building a discipline known as conservation genomics. Last summer, the U.S. Forest Service announced, in fact, that they were dedicating a new National Genomics Center for Wildlife and Fish Conservation in honor of Fred. Many of you know that Fred and his wife, Michael, were caught in a freak avalanche that sadly took Michael's life. Fred has exhibited extreme courage and tenacity in recovering from his own injuries. I'm delighted to recognize Fred today and ask him to stand as we welcome him back to campus. Fred? Great to have you back, Fred. Several weeks ago, Thomson Reuters, a news agency, conducted a study that asked the question, who are some of the best and brightest scientific minds of our time? They studied the impact of scientific work and identified the top 1% of scientists around the world. Three of those scientists are UM faculty members, and they're here with us today. Would you please stand and let us recognize you, all, all three of you stand, and then, we'll, and then we'll give you applause. Regents Professor of Ecology, Steve Running. Associate Professor of Conservation Ecology, Gordon Lucart, And Professor of Biology, Ray Calloway. Thank you all for the distinction with which you represent yourselves.
What a tremendous accomplishment, and I want to note that these are the only three Montanans so recognized. UM has a reputation for, for producing champions from within our student body as well. Last year, three of our undergraduates, coached by a graduate student, went to the 18th International Intercollegiate Ethics Bowl, competing with 32 teams that had won their regional competition. The UM team won the competition and became the national champions. I want to recognize them now, and I believe that we have one representative of the team in the audience. I think Hayden Hooker uh, is one of the students who is on the team. Hayden, are you here? Right here in front. Thank you. Congratulations. The Udall Foundation was created in 1992 to honor Morris and Stuart Udall for their work as national public servants. The foundation created the Udall Scholarship, a nationally competitive scholarship that recognizes work in public service, the environment, and Native American issues. That profile fits the University of Montana so well that we lead the nation in the number of Udall scholars of any institution. Last spring, we were notified of yet another of our students, Hope Radford, became our 37th Udall scholar. The year before, our 36th Udall scholar was Mara Menahan. She went on last year to earn yet another prestigious distinction. She was named our 14th Truman Scholar. She was then named our Newman Civic Fellow as well. Mara, a student in the Davidson Honors College, graduated with majors in environmental studies and geography, and now she's contemplating pursuing an MFA in art. Please congratulate Mara on her tremendous accomplishments. Mara, where are you? Right on. Our dining services staff has performed with distinction. Last spring, Director of Dining Services, Mark Laparco, was selected by the International Food Service Manufacturers Association to receive the Silver Plate Award for the colleges and universities category. Just weeks later, the National Association of College and University Food Services recognized the entire UM Dining Services program with its 2014 Gold Award for Sustainability. We have a number of people here from Dining Services today, and I would like them to stand and be recognized for their contributions. Two weeks ago, we held a truly remarkable event in Washington Grizzly Stadium. Sir Paul McCartney selected Missoula and UM to be a stop on his out there tour. The evening was nothing short of spectacular, and I, for one, will remember it forever. How many of you were there? All right, I know I saw a lot of you there. It was a great evening. Well, that special evening happened because the hard, of the hard work of literally hundreds of people at UM. And I would like to thank Brad Murphy, who led that whole effort, and the whole McCartney team, who, those of you who are able to be here today. Would you please stand and let us thank you for the wonderful entertainment that you helped to provide, not only the University of Montana, but the entire state of Montana. Brad? We're waiting for the next one, Brad. <laughs> Our athletic program continues to be a powerhouse as we strive for excellence in the classroom, excellence in the community, and excellence in competition. Our men's and women's tennis teams last year became the Big Sky champions. Our student athletes excelled in competition while collectively earning a grade point average above 3.0 for the 18th semester in a row. And in the process, they contributed over 2,000 hours of volunteer service to the Missoula community. We have some representatives of our athletic program here with us today, some student athletes, and I'd like you to stand so that we can thank you for the tremendous representation of the university that you provide. So where are our student athletes? Finally, let me recognize a distinguished group of people who help make UM a place for students of all ages. We have a program called the MOLLE program, Montana Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. It's designed to provide educational opportunities for people over 50 years old. 
Course topics include world geopolitics, sciences, the arts, history, and more. Last spring semester, we enrolled over 800 students in the Mali program, people from the Missoula area who have a passion for learning. The Mali program is overseen by a community-based board chaired by Ann Boone, illustrating just one example of the terrific supportive relationship we have with our host community. Members of the board are here today, and so I'm going to ask you to stand, and please let us welcome you to campus, and thank you for providing such unique educational opportunities for our students. So you see, those of you who are new to campus, you're joining a remarkable group of people who care deeply about the University of Montana, who care deeply about our research, and who care deeply about our students. So a few minutes ago, Provost Brown and the deans introduced our new faculty members. Let me now introduce some other new people to the campus, and I will ask them to all stand, and then we'll applaud at the end. So you already met Larry Abramson, dean of the School of Journalism, Kimberly Brown Campbell, our Campus Assault Prevention Coordinator. Royelle Bundy, who might be the newest uh, member of campus, she just started, Director of our American Indian Student Services Program. Travis DeCure, our head men's basketball coach. Lori Fisher, not new to campus, but new as our Director of Career Services. David Gant, Assistant Vice President of Gift Planning at the UM Foundation. Sean Grove, the Director of our Veterans Office. Art Held, again, not new to campus, but new to his position as Vice President for Development Services at the UM Foundation. You met Reed Humphrey, Dean of the College of Health Professions and Biomedical Sciences. Barry Kenfield, Director and Chief Operating Officer of the Family Medical Residency Program of Western Montana. Nathan Lindsay, Associate Provost for Dynamic Learning, also very new to campus. Marty Ludeman, Director of Office of Public Safety and our Chief of Police. Greg Monroe, Interim Dean, School of Law. Jamie Pinkerton, our head softball coach, of whom we have great expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Stanton, Chief Financial Officer uh, for the UM Foundation. Joni Stevens, our head women's golf coach, also high expectations. <laughs> Jessica Weltman, Director and Title IX Coordinator of our Office of Equal Opportunity and Affirmative Action. So please join me and welcome these people who are new to campus. <laughs> Shared governance is fundamental to the University of Montana, and we have with us the leadership of our various shared governance groups today, and I'd like you to stand and be recognized. From our faculty senate, our new chair, Steve Lodmel, and our chair-elect, Bill Borey. From our student, uh, Associated Students of the University of Montana, re-elected for the first time in history that we know of, our president, Asa Holman, and our vice president, Sean McQuillan. Our staff senate leadership, President Maggie Linder, and vice chair, Matt Filer. Thank you for your work and uh, for the time that you put in in this volunteer capacity as well. Thank you. Well, let me turn now to some of the hard work that we as a university community have taken on during this past year. If there was a theme for last year, I think it would be turning challenge into leadership. So let me give you some, or some examples. We were challenged by the issue of campus safety and particularly the issue of sexual assault. We see now that the nation has recognized sexual assault as a matter of almost epidemic proportions. We were among the first to interact with the Department of Justice through a resolution document. Now some 75 institutions around the country are going through the same process. We at UM took this matter extremely seriously, recognizing that we have a key responsibility to our students. The educational programming, PETSA, now completed by 20,000 students, has made a difference and has served as a model for other institutions. Difficult a time as that was, we emerged as a stronger institution, a safer campus, much better integrated with Missoula's enforcement activity, and something of a national leader. It was due to the hard work of many, many people. Enrollment, as Provost Brown has mentioned, has been a challenge for us this past couple of years. 
As a result, we had to do some serious self-evaluation of our recruiting and marketing efforts. And we made many important changes. We now have a program that includes more vibrant general marketing built around electronic communication and social media. We've completely revamped our recruiting materials and structured an aggressive schedule of contact with prospective students. And we've renewed connections to high schools through our faculty. For example, Brent Ruby and Matt Bundle of the College of Education and Human Sciences took their exciting program around human performance and exercise physiology to students in the Flathead Valley. We live in an extremely competitive environment for students, and we must all play an active role in recruiting and retaining students. I'm so proud of the way everyone has stepped up to do exactly that. Student success remains among the top priorities of the Regents and of this university. Among the biggest challenges to incoming students is their academic preparedness in the area of mathematics. A year ago, several folks at UM, including Bob Curry of the Montana Digital Academy, Dean Bobby Evans of the College of Education, Erica Tweet of the UM Foundation, and Sharon O'Hare from the Provost's Office, led an effort to pilot a new program called Ed Ready a digital approach to moving students from a level of developmental math, that is, pre-college level math, up to the level of college level math. The pilot project results were impressive. 86% of the students involved in the Ed Ready pilot successfully made the transition to college level math in a matter of about six weeks. With financial support from the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation, the university and the Digital Academy are now implementing EdReady on a statewide scale so that every student in Montana can be ready for college-level math in the future. Our academic programming on campus represents educational opportunities that form a solid foundation for a life of citizenship and fulfillment, and that represent state-of-the-art thinking in groundbreaking areas. This last year brought two major cross-disciplinary initiatives into focus at the university. The BRAIN initiative recognizes the tremendous academic strength across our campus, ranging from the basic neurosciences to the newly approved Neural Injury Center to work in cognition and brain development in young people to the connection between the creative arts and brain function. The Data Science Initiative is emerging in partnership with a vibrant business community in Missoula. The Missoula College is initiating a cybersecurity certificate, for example. We launched a new cyber innovation laboratory funded uh, in part by uh, community members, by these businesses in Missoula. In the School of Business, we've offered for several semesters now a big data curriculum in connection with IBM, the first of its kind at the undergraduate level. Just recently, the software giant Symantec launched a new academic outreach program within their company, and they began their program with one institution, the University of Montana. Symantec provided UM with $100,000 worth of software to teach a special course on e-discovery. In other academic innovation, our media arts program is making their entire undergraduate program online beginning this fall in an innovative approach to reaching students through the best technology available. The Global Leadership Initiative, now in its fourth year, held its first passport ceremony last spring, symbolically and literally sending its students off to exciting places around the world, places that will enhance their education with a world view. Our first class of GLI students will graduate this coming May. I'm very much looking forward to that. I would add that we had a meeting yesterday with prospective GLI students. I'm delighted to say that it was in the ballroom. It was a standing room only uh, meeting. There's tremendous interest in that program. The impact and relevance of our research at the university was illustrated in a dramatic manner recently by the announcement of a record-setting $45 million cooperative agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers. Under the direction of Professor Rick Hauer, UM researchers will conduct ecological and anthropological studies on lands managed by the Corps all over the country. UM was chosen for this project because of its broad, top-level expertise in research of this nature, and frankly, because of the leadership of Professor Hauer. Another great impact of our scholarship on hard-hitting issues is the work of Associate Professor Nate Levto from Liberal Studies in the area of censorship. 
Nate is the recipient of the prestigious Berlin Prize, as well as a Fulbright Fellowship, to study historical instances of censorship, even going back to pre-biblical times. He'll study at the American Academy in Berlin this fall. He's a member of a highly selective group of scholars chosen for that opportunity. The research portfolio of a major research institution covers the spectrum from very basic work that expands the knowledge base of human society and enriches our lives, all the way to the application of that knowledge to today's challenges and opportunities. Economic development is an increasingly important expectation and result of the research that we do here at the university. Montech is our big business incubator facility that resides across the river from campus and houses startup businesses that have a connection to the university. The anchor tenant is Rivertop Renewables, a company that we showcased to regents and legislators during a recent uh, tour this summer. Rivertop received a remarkable infusion of capital, $26 million during this past year, and it is really thriving. Rivertop was created by chemistry professor emeritus Don Kiley based on research he conducted here while a faculty member. And it's now a company that employs UM graduates from several disciplines. What a success story. The next major entrepreneur is likely to come from our new Blackstone Launchpad initiative, a project aimed to help current students and alumni move their ideas into the private sector. The launch pad is housed in the university center, led by Paul Gladen, and again, it is uh, really uh, oversubscribed. We're delighted to see that. In another area of uh, work this past year, we've made important progress on our facilities and infrastructure. The next phase of work was completed on the Interdisciplinary Sciences Building, leaving only about a floor left to build out on that uh, really nice structure. This fall, uh, in a matter of weeks, we will open the Eloise Cabell Land and Culture Institute in the lower level of the Payne Family Native American Center. The institute will house a state-of-the-art uh, geographic information systems laboratory, a film studies theater, a new classroom, and a distinctive ceremonial space that will double as a, that will double as a planetarium thanks to the work of Chris Comer and, uh, and many of the people that have been involved in helping that project underway. Under construction right now is a new computing facility to ensure reliable and expansive computing on our campus. An innovative approach to this is using something called technology modular units, which will provide the best security and protection available to our data, data and information while using a minimum of energy. Additionally, Wi-Fi became available in all of our residence halls as of now, and we're now connected to the world's research community through a new 100 gigabit research network. A great university is assisted by donations from people who are passionate about higher education. The UM Foundation had a truly amazing year, logging $53.7 million in private donations to the University of Montana blowing by the previous record. This is both a record dollar amount, but just as importantly, a record number of donors. The record resulted from the hard work of countless individuals in the foundation, in the university, and volunteers from our extensive network of alumni and friends. And it resulted because of an intense focus on a campaign that we called Investing in Student Success, something which resonated very strongly with our donors. Well, I could go on for quite a while about the many things that we've done together this past year, but I want to turn to uh, focusing on the future and talk about some things uh, ahead of us. The future for the university is not just a bright future, it's a brilliant future. I think this because the innovative spirit is running very high on campus, we're powered by creative, hardworking, and dedicated people and because Montana and the country needs institutions like the University of Montana, flagship institutions that educate students for tomorrow, that carry out scholarships that scholarship that transforms lives, and that holds dear the exchange and debate of ideas so critical to our democracy. So I want to focus on five areas of work that we'll look at uh, this year that I believe will make us an even stronger institution. The first of these is the Academic Alignment and Innovation Project. Last spring, I wrote to the leadership of the Faculty Senate, to the deans, and to the provost, asking that they undertake this project. 
If we're going to be an indispensable, society-driving, door-opening institution, we must make sure that we're offering the most impactful, attractive, and relevant curriculum possible. My charge was as follows. Examine how we ensure that the spirit of the liberal arts are central to today's higher education and identify the best way to, commute the, to communicate the importance of the liberal arts. Design a process for identifying programs across campus that are challenged by low enrollment or perception of relevance. For those programs, examine what we can do to strengthen them and make them more attractive to today's students. Identify existing undergraduate, graduate, or professional programs that present distinctive opportunities for growth or strengthening because they're already in high demand and have strong placement opportunities. Suggest programs that are not yet present on our campus but should be given our mission and the opportunities that those programs would represent. Suggest new or expanded opportunities for interdisciplinary, international, and online offerings. As they go through their work, I want this group to keep in mind the drive toward national distinction among our programmatic offerings. And I also want them to keep in mind the tough issues to which today's students need exposure. I'm delighted that the Faculty Senate and the deans have embraced this challenge. The Senate requested that a faculty leadership fellow be appointed to lead this effort, and we've selected Professor Andrew Ware of Physics for that role, so he's getting uh, his work underway. Secondly, our attractiveness and our effectiveness can't be limited to our academic programs only. So today I'm announcing that we're going to be conducting a parallel administrative review. The objective is to ensure that we provide state-of-the-art services to our students, our staff, our faculty, and our visitors. This project will include the following elements. Develop an inventory of all of our non-academic programs. Develop a rubric for characterizing the quality, the responsiveness, and the effectiveness of those programs. As in the case of the academic process, identify those programs that are challenged with respect to effectiveness and develop a plan for improvement. Also, identify those programs that represent best practice in higher education, and we have many of those on this campus, and determine how we can capitalize on that strength and model it for other programs. Finally, look for opportunities for greater collaboration or alternative organization that would provide better service in a more cost-effective manner. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll be working with our shared governance structure to build a team to lead this work. Third, I'm also launching today an initiative that we'll call Financial Management for Tomorrow's UM. Resources at UM will always be finite and will never cover everything we want to accomplish. Therefore, it's imperative that we manage our resources with maximum effectiveness. We have in place, frankly, a number of outdated pra practices and financial arrangements that need review. So I've asked Vice President Mike Reed to lead a comprehensive review of our financial practices. Specifically, these points will be addressed. In partnership with the shared governance structure, develop a new methodology that provides strategic allocation of UM's resources. Evaluate and update all internal financial agreements between UM departments, auxiliaries, and affiliate or organizations. We can't continue to be constrained by agreements that were made years ago under entirely different circumstances. Evaluate and restructure the current use of designated funds on related op and related operations to ensure that they're providing appropriate support and benefit to the mission of the university. In cooperation with other sectors, analyze the manner in which we fund IT and how we make the best use of our indirect cost recovery dollars from grant activity. And finally, provide campus-wide communication and educational programming to ensure a comprehensive understanding of our finances by everyone interested. A fourth area of focus during this year will be our continued work to achieve the best possible facilities and infrastructure that we can provide for our students and faculty and staff. We have a number of projects that will be actively underway during the course of this year. The Harold and Priscilla Gilkey Center for Entrepreneurship and Executive Education is ready, at long last, Larry, uh, for construction. The center will be located just west of the Gallagher School of Business Administration. 
It will house programs for the School of Business as well as other units that reach out to businesses, to nonprofits, and to other organizations to provide tailored educational programming. The center will also be the new home for the University of Montana Foundation, which will occupy, occupy the second floor and part of the, uh, the ground floor. This building is funded mostly with private sources with a contribution from student facilities fees. The new softball complex is under construction. It's located on the south campus right behind the soccer field. We held a wonderful groundbreaking ceremony just two weeks ago. We'll play our first season next spring on the new field. The field will have an entirely synthetic surface, I'm told, allowing for play and practice in almost any weather condition. This project is being funded mostly from student athletic fees, which students approved two years ago to increase athletic opportunities for our female students. About 20 young women have arrived on campus to form the first team under Coach Pinkerton. On Wednesday, just a couple of days ago, we held a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Student Athlete Academic Center to be constructed on the front end of the Adams Center. The area is already fenced off, as you might have seen when you came in, and construction is starting. The project is privately funded and it will help ensure that our student athletes continue to excel. And of course, in just a few minutes, we'll move across the river to the site of the new Missoula College for a groundbreaking ceremony. This ceremony represents a momentous day for the Missoula College, for UM, for Missoula itself, and for the state of Montana. We'll say much more about this at the ceremony, but this brand new beautiful building on a spectacular location will provide educational opportunities for thousands of students to come. Thanks to many, many people for that project. It's a $32 million project funded through a state appropriation of $29 million approved during the last legislative session and an additional $3 million of privately raised money. I hope to see you at this ceremony. Finally, we're going to use this year to position ourselves for transformative fundraising through private philanthropy. In partnership with the UM Foundation, we're moving toward full campaign mode. A campaign planning committee is in place. The Campus Development Committee is homing in on the priorities for fundraising. The Foundation Board of Trustees is gearing up to take a leadership role. And the Foundation staff, under Shane Geese's leadership, is putting many pieces in place to run an ambitious, and successful fundraising effort. Philanthropy has been key to UM's success to date, and philanthropy will be key to our future. Building on the outstanding year we just completed in private fundraising, the Foundation's work will set a whole new standard for private support for the University of Montana. We'll all be exceptionally busy this year, busy with providing our students the best education possible, and busy building a great university for the state of Montana and for our nation. I extend my thanks to each of you for the role you play and for the dedication you have for UM. Again, we have the privilege of working in a very special place. I'll end with just a brief message. Like most of you, I undergo an annual evaluation, culminating in an executive session with the Board of Regents and with the Commissioner. I find it to be a time of frank conversation with the Regents and one that is helpful to me in so many ways. This past May, one of the Regents, Major Robinson, made a simple but powerful comment to me and it has stuck with me. He said, be sure to find the joy in your work. We all lead busy, even hectic lives and we deal every day with challenges, every one of us in the room. But we also have the opportunity every day to find the joy in what we do. The joy of seeing a student winning a national scholarship or of a faculty member receiving a national recognition, a staff member being singled out by a colleague for a job well done, a graduate writing back to say how much her education meant to her, and the joy of working every day with wonderful colleagues and friends. So I urge all of you to take a little time to find the joy in your work for the University of Montana. Thank you and have a great year. Thank you.